Those who train themselves in the enlightened attitude of Purucita and who practice the sending and taking of Tongan are called Bodhisattvas. Now, what is a bodhisattva? As we have heard before, a bodhisattva is someone who practices loving kindness and compassion towards being and who uh, towards beings and who uh, practices, for instance, also the meditation of sending and taking, the meditation of Tongan. Now, needless to say, a real Bodhisattva is someone who truly has made that his or her uh, uh, attitude or wish from the bottom of their hearts. Those who truly wish to bring about benefit and welfare for others, those who truly wish to establish others in the freedom from suffering and the causes thereof, and who eventually lead them to the perfect awakening of Buddhahood. Those who not only formulate that wish in some hazy way, but who actually endeavor to do something about it. Those are the ones who, practicing accordingly, are true bodhisattvas. That is what, what, is what, what it means to be a bodhisattva. <laughs> ได้ดูสมบูรณ์ตรงนี้จงบอกต่อเช่นบอกต่อคนทั้งหมดสั่งเสียดังดังเต็มบ้างงานจะต้องเต็มบ้างชาวต้องเต็มบ้างเต็ม
count on that as well, well, certainly there would be no harm. It was none other but the Buddha himself who <laughs> demonstrated such behavior. There is that famous uh, story of uh, how shortly before he achieved the awakening of Buddhahood, uh, he demonstrated uh, his imminent enlightenment in a certain way. He did not just sit there and uh, allowed it to, to happen unnoticed, but uh, uh, he actually put on quite a display. And it is said that uh, shortly before that came to pass, he emanated from his forehead a great light which uh, suffused the rums of all evil beings, the rums of all demons, of all spirits, etc. And it eventually also came to the attention of the king, <coughs> the ruler of all the demons, which was known under the name of Praheshwara. And uh, that uh, demon king then summoned his armies and said, we have to do something about it. We cannot allow this person to achieve awakening or the enlightenment of Buddhahood. Uh, that will bode ill for us in the future. So he tried very hard together with his armies to prevent the Buddha from doing so. They sent all their demon armies there together with all the weapons that they had just there at their disposal and they rained down all sorts of uh, swords and spears and arrows etc. upon the Buddha. But the Buddha being immersed in the Samadhi immediately before his achievement of enlightenment uh, could not be harmed at all. Rather, as soon as all of these weapons came close to him, about uh, an arm spans a cubit's length away from his body, all of these weapons were then transformed miraculously <coughs> into flowers, a huge rain of flowers which fell down upon him. <laughs> Tom so this type of great example is what we should heed, we should try to emulate uh, such examples to the very best of our ability. And accordingly, in the teaching of the seven points of mind training, also by Atisha, by Atisha, uh, Atisha says in one verse or in one sentence, at all times train yourself in speech or train yourself with words. 
which means to say that if you follow the Bodhisattva path, you should try to train yourself in gentle speech. You should not speak harshly, you should not speak in a, an insulting way to others, you should not speak in such a way that upsets others. You should always try to speak in a gentle way, in a pleasant way, so that whatever it is you say, whatever you, however you address yourself uh, to others is uh, pleasing and soothing to them. And then there is also that uh, another saying, a Tibetan saying, which, which says, uh, words are not swords or arrows, yet they still tear you apart. Which means to say, again, that uh, even though words, of course, are not weapons, they still have the power, if maliciously used, they still have the power to greatly disrupt the life of other people, to bring about great difficulties and pain and harm for others. Therefore, someone who finds himself or herself upon the Bodhisattva path should always endeavor to train themselves in gentle speech. <coughs> When training oneself in this way, for instance, in gentle speech, this by all means also uh, means that we also can use such gentle speech to praise others, to express our rejoicing in the happiness of others. If we come across someone who is enjoying uh, great happiness, wealth, influence among other people, etc., then we could by all means not only think, but also say how wonderful this person must have accumulated great merits in the past, and we could add the wish that may this person and all other persons of such a type, may they continue to enjoy such happiness, such, uh, uh, such wealth, or whatever it is. So we can use our speech uh, uh, also, or we are actually called upon to use our speech as well to repress, uh, to express whatever rejoicing we uh, experience over the happiness uh, of, of others who very clearly have accumulated the merits to enjoy such happiness in the first place. Any young, sentient, not such a mullova, don't let them all over, and this thing I don't make it home. That is a gentle that don't hurt the dishes. This is a gentle that don't hurt on Kawasho, they cheat on Dembarisho, around there. Similarly, when we encounter others who undergo suffering, pain, sickness, whatsoever. We may also then express the wish in whichever form that may they in the future, or may they as soon as possible, become free of such suffering. May all beings not have to undergo such suffering. May they become free of the causes that, uh, 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 that result in such suffering. <laughs> In such a way we can use all sorts of uh, even very daily activities as a cause for um, wishing good for others. For instance, in the morning, after we have uh, gotten up, and when we then eventually put on whatever clothes we are going to wear on that day, we could think, these are like the armor of patience. And we could endeavor to walk, to go through that day in a patient manner, patient with whomever or whatever we encounter. 
when we close our belt in the morning, we could think uh, this is the belt of diligence. Armed with such diligence, uh, I, want to, uh, I want to work for the welfare of others. Or when we walk upstairs, we could think these stairs that I'm climbing, they are like the stairs that lead to the awakening of Buddhahood, that lead uh, uh, from this realm to the achievement uh, of uh, enlightenment. May I and all beings climb these stairs or climb this ladder that leads from here to the, uh, to the awakening of enlightenment. In this way, whatever sort of situation, whatever <coughs> small daily thing it is we're doing, we can give it such meaning by way of wishing in this way for the benefit and welfare of all. Similarly, when using a ship to cross an ocean or a lake, or when using a bridge to cross a river, on such an occasion, we could think and we could wish and pray that just as I am crossing this body of water now, may I and all beings cross the ocean of suffering and, uh, and reach from this ocean of suffering to the liberation from suffering. May they in this way uh, reach across this ocean and achieve the awakening. <laughs> These are some examples of how someone who finds himself or herself in the path of a bodhisattva would practice, how such a person would uh, use all sorts of occasions for the benefit and welfare of others. And <laughs> Such kind of activity, such kind of bodhisattva or Buddha behavior, we could make an example for, our, for ourselves. And uh, there are a great many of uh, such examples that show how beneficial it is to make such wishes, such aspirations and prayers. For instance, there's the one that manifests of the, as, the, uh, as the medicine Buddha, the corresponding uh, uh, sutra in which the origin of the medicine Buddha is being described, it is said that uh, before this Buddha appeared as uh, the one at which we know him, he made 12 great, great wishes or, or aspiration prayers, and uh, uh, among them he uttered the wish that uh, may I in the future, whenever I achieve Buddhahood, um, uh, may it be of benefit to beings to even just hear my name. Just hearing my name, may they become free of suffering, may they become free of uh, the uh, causes and circumstances that uh, produce suffering, may they become free of all sicknesses and causes thereof. And correspondingly, we know nowadays that uh, uh, just to utter the name of the Medicine Buddha indeed brings about great benefit. So, this should be an example for ourselves as well, that uh, we could make such aspirations, we could make such wishes uh, from the bottom of our hearts for the sake and welfare of others, and they will eventually bring about uh, great benefit. <laughs> Chu 
So it goes without saying that whatever it is that we endeavor to do, particularly if we are practitioners of such mind training, that we should always try to do it in, to do it in a harmonious way, harmonious in our being together with others, uh, whatever we endeavor will be so much easier accomplished. For instance, if we would find ourselves among uh, people uh, that belong to our family, we all know from experience that if there is harmony between them, whatever it is that is being, uh, 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 that is being planned is so much easier accomplished. If there is uh, strife and uh, all sorts of differences and even fighting among uh, uh, among them, then even the tiniest little thing will be very difficult to accomplish. Be that uh, a Dharma activity or be that a worldly activity, it holds true for both. Therefore, uh, that would be extremely beneficial in whatever we do, particularly if we are on the Bodhisattva path, particularly if we are mind training practitioners. <laughs> So, a simple example of how this works would be to imagine someone who wants to lift or one who wants to move a heavy object, a heavy load. You could, of course, try to do so alone. You might even succeed, but it goes without saying that if you call others in to help, if you join in with others, a second person or yet another two and another couple of them until there are four or six or eight people, then, of course, whatever object, whatever load it is that you're trying to move will be so much easier moved. Of course, if you were to uh, pull into all directions, you wouldn't get anywhere, but if you were harmonious among yourselves and if you were, uh, if you would uh, put your strengths together to move that thing, whatever it might be, then, needless to say, things would go so much easier, things would be much easier and quicker accomplished. In this way, it uh, is, of course, uh, uh, extremely beneficial, helpful for everybody concerned to proceed in such a way. Then the same holds true basically for all walks of life. No matter where one looks, where people work together in a harmonious way, things without, uh, needless to say, go so much easier. Look at any given country in this world, they are for the most part not governed by a single person but by a whole group of people who ideally, of course, should strive to bring about together in a harmonious way the good for others. And if they do so in a proper way, then indeed there will be great benefit for all and all the people of that country uh, will live harmoniously, happily and will benefit from such endeavor. Or if one, if one were even to look uh, simply at uh, Buddhist monasteries, the way they are run, if things are being done, conducted in a harmonious way, if the lamas and monks uh, are friendly with each other, work together, then the running of such a place is very easy and great <coughs> benefit comes there. Or if they gather together for an assembly, for a ritual or whatever, if they all do so in a harmonious way, if they share in the various works, the various activities that have to be conducted in the course of such, of such a coming together, of such an assembly, then this will be a very harmonious affair and great benefit will derive thereof indeed. 
then the Tompe. And the Tompe, the Ben Barba, Barba, then Biba, Robert. Robert, you go to Marwa. Rooms, Rumula, shoot some of Judy or Then a Barba don't room cony, catch as he is. Then a Ramonga Sena, Barba told a tiny Jopon Roto Mudua, Adi. Then a Barba Sena, Nan Roto Togo Mudu, Nana, take Jona Nala and drop or joke to be loved. Ngaran Hello, there's a story about how <laughs> being harmonious among each other can be very beneficial indeed. There is that children's story that is being told in Tibet which goes on about a rabbit and a turtle, or rather more three turtles, but we only hear about that in a minute. Rabbit meets turtle and says to the turtle, well, you're quite slow, aren't you? You're not getting from anywhere to anywhere quickly, aren't you? And the turtle says, well, as I'm walking along here, I take my time, I take things leisurely, but uh, if I feel like running, well, just wait, then you can see uh, how I can manage. And the rabbit, well, of course, he didn't really believe it. He said, well, you can run. I want to see that. That uh, doesn't, doesn't really work out at all. Let's have ourselves a race. See the peak of the mountain up there? Let's try to get up there. Let's see who manages to get up there first. The turtle says, yes, of course, we can do that. No sweat, easily done, but not today. Let's do meet in three days, and then uh, we can go up there and see who, who is the faster of us. Rabbit very clearly not the cleverest of rabbits, agreed <laughs> and said, okay, three days we meet and then we have ourselves a race and I'll show you, just wait. And uh, Turtle, being on the other hand rather clever, called two more of his friends. And these three turtles, they were really good friends, they for the most part agreed on everything and they also agreed to show that rabbit. So they agreed that uh, one turtle would be at the start, whereas the second turtle would be somewhere halfway up the mountain, and the third turtle would already be waiting up top for the rabbit. So the day came when the great race was about to start, and the rabbit came to meet the turtle, and uh, uh, they uh, agreed, now here we go, and the rabbit went off like a rocket. And he figured like when he was halfway up the hill, he figured like, ha, well, I got that turtle, certainly mm -hmm. showed him, uh, but let's make sure, and he just called, just to make sure that the turtle was way behind him, and he called with that voice, and <laughs> demonstrated, he called with that high-pitched voice, <laughs> the turtle, 
And thinking that the turtle would be way behind him, all of a sudden he was very surprised when it was that deep voice, like from above, so hello. <laughs> and rabbit really thinks, like, what, what the hell? And he keeps on rocketing up the hill. And when he gets up to the hill, then he, he thinks, well, ha, I got here first. I certainly showed that. Uh, so he showed that turtle, and just to make sure again, he shouts again for the turtle, and again there is a voice coming from above. Well, that totally devastated the rabbit, and he definitely was shown by the turtles how to do things. This was yet another example how being harmonious and doing things together, helping each other out instead of opposing each other all the time, is a very beneficial thing indeed. It even helps to win a race. <laughs> Fifteen minutes left for questions.